I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, it's 10 after 7. So I apologize that we are late. Um, at a meeting of June 8th, 2021, would you please rise for the invocation by Ms. Thurston? I will make this short and sweet. We made it. It is the end of the school year. Congratulations to the entire staff, nurses, teachers, superintendent, custodial, all of the students that helped everybody get through this crazy 15 months. Enjoy your summer. You guys all deserve it. And congratulations to our seniors. Can't wait to see you guys in a couple weeks. That is my favorite time of being a board member is watching you guys walk across the stage with the big smiles. So congratulations, and we will see you soon. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and, and justice for all. God bless America. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Thurston. Fire evacuation. There's two exits from the chambers, one to the rear of the chamber, out to the parking out to the parking lot, or to my left, your right, left down the stairs into the rear parking lot. Can we have roll call, please? Mrs. Thurston? Here. Mr. Ungeyer? Here. Mrs. Cushman? Here. Mrs. Hall? Mr. LeBlanc? Here. Mrs. LeBlanc? Here. Mr. Ryder? Here. Mr. Salazar? Chairman Cruzel? Here. Mr. Salazar had a, uh, a work-related event. He couldn't be here, and Ms. Thurston had, I mean, Ms. Ms. Hall had another prior engagement also. Number six, board guests. Mr. Dresick, I let you, because I think we're only doing one tonight. Yes. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tonight, we welcome Enfield High math teacher and Buzz Robotics advisor, Carolyn Marr. Ms. Haar is here along with several students to give the board an update on the 2021 first robotic season. There's a memo detailing their accomplishments in your packet. And at this point, I would welcome up our Enfield High School Buzz Robotics students and their advisor. Please, well, yeah, move any chairs you want. You can steal one from the back. Just speak into the microphone. We have the wireless ones there too, if you need be. So hi, I'm um, Caroline Marr. I'm a math teacher at Enfield High School, and I'm also one of the lead mentors for Buzz Robotics. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to my students to just give you an update on how their season went this year as a fully virtual robotics team. Um, but I just wanted to introduce them. So uh, with me, I have Aiden Howell, Mike Conroy, and Matt LaDuke. Just state your names for the records and you can remove your masks too. Just tap on it if it's. There you go. Uh, hi, I'm Aiden Howell and I'm a junior. I'm Michael Conroy, I'm a senior. I'm Matthew LaDuke, I'm a junior. Uh, in the 2020 to 2021 season, Buzz Robotics participated in the first robotics competition program as a fully virtual team. Even though we weren't able to build a robot this year, Buzz was able to compete in five different virtual events sponsored by FIRST for both individual and team awards. We met multiple times a week, fully virtual, to work on our projects and the submissions. Our, team, uh, our two major projects uh, this year were two virtual challenges cre created uh, by FIRST for teams to compete in. The first of these was called the Game Design Challenge. Each year, robots uh, in FIRST Robotics uh, competition play a completely different game that, with rules that are released uh, in January. This year, teams had the opportunity to create uh, their own games with any theme they wanted, design the elements that robots would interact with, uh, come up with scoring and create rules. Buzz created a, a visual art themed game with the goal of putting the A into Steam. Our game was entitled First Masterpiece. We had the opportunity to design and iterate our game field using CAD software, uh, integrate art from members of our team, and use iMovie uh, to create an animation explaining how the game uh, was, was played. The second, the second major challenge we participated in was called the First Innovation Challenge. In this a challenge, first teams had to identify a problem or opportunity to help people. Keep, regain, or achieve optimum physical and or mental 
health, and fitness through active play or movement. We chose to consider how the deaf and hard of hearing community was able to access team sports a lot, along with their peers and found that the biggest challenge deaf and hard of hearing athletes was communi communicating with teammates. We designed the Say and See Sports Goggles, a pair of sports goggles which would translate simple audio commands into visual signals to allow deaf and hard of hearing players to interpret verbal communications from teammates. The goal of our product was to create a more inclusive sports environment for all players. Buzz also created submissions for three different awards that are part of the FIRST program every year. The first award was the Chairman's Award, intended to honor teams for being science and technology leaders in their community. The Dean's List Award, which honors individual students for their contributions to their team and to the FIRST program as a whole. And the Woody Flowers Award, where students can nominate a candidate who demonstrates outstanding mentorship. Along with competing in uh, challenges, Buzz sponsored a food drive uh, to benefit the Enfield Food Shelf uh, with collections at Enfield High School, Enfield Street School, Henry Barnard, Hazardville Memorial, John F. Kennedy Middle School, Edgar Parkman, Eli Whitney, the Enfield Public Library, and the Shaker Pines Lake Association. Buzz was excited to be able to partner with both our schools uh, and our community to benefit the food shelf. We were able to collect uh, 1,106 pounds of food and supplies, as well as $668 in cash the equivalent of 3,705 meals. Buzz Robotics would like to thank the Enfield Board of Education for the support of our team. We can't wait to have the opportunity to return to the Enfield Annex and begin building robots and competing in person again next year. Hold it up closer, sir. Okay, we're good. Again, any, any, any questions? Any comments? Mr. Ryder. Congratulations. Um, how did it work? How did, how did your goggles work? Um, did, was there a rating? Did you place? Did you win? Like, because <laughs> that, that sounds like something that we could really put into play. Uh, well, so the, the challenge itself was not necessarily to build or um, manufacture this, this product. It was more to um, brainstorm an I, uh, idea or a solution to a um, problem that we we chose to help better a community and help more people engage and become uh, more active during um, the whole pandemic. Uh, so we never actually built it, and um, but we had to make sure we had the theory and all that put together. Um, we didn't we didn't uh, win, but we we did give it our all, and it was good all around. Well, no, I just I think that that's a great idea for something that should exist for our you know athletes that, that can't hear that that it was a, it's a great idea so thank you for bringing that idea to the forefront and hopefully somebody can run with that you can pass the baton off thank you guys as long as you get the patent rights uh. yep <laughs> well it's on tv so we can prove it was your yes. idea let's let's push me i was just curious is there a possibility that there may be something you could work on could you continue to pursue this next year because as a, I, that was my background is teaching at School for the Deaf. So I really, that's really dear to my heart. Uh, well, we, we didn't, I don't know if we discussed the idea of working on it at all, but um, I'm sure if we ever have um, a desire to mm -hmm. work on something on the side or we need something to do, it, it will definitely come up and we could see if we can do something about it. Yeah, thank you, that's exciting. Ms. LeBlanc. I just want to thank you um, for your presentation. I'm sure, you know, the last year has been very, really trying because I'm sure that in 2020 when you joined Buzz, you were getting ready to, or 2019 really, the end of when the school year started, you were like ready. Like I, it's, I want to build, I want to go to competition. So I'm sure, you know, last year was very hard for you. So I'm hoping that you did get something out of what you were able to do this year. And I'm sure it was also more challenging um, to have to do that virtually and come up with theory um, and, and kind of almost frustrating to not be able to put it into a build. So um, I appreciate your determination and, and being part of Buzz Robotics. It's always fascinated me. Um, kids your age that are so good at the engineering concepts and math because that was not a strong point of mine. Um, so I really, I really look at you guys and, and, and I'm quite pleased that 
we have students in our district. So thank you. So it's two years you actually missed. You missed 2020 yeah. building and 2021. Just so we all know, it's two years that you that you're behind. But I look forward to 2022, and I know some of you won't be here, and I apologize for what we've lived through. And it's a, it's a shame that we've lived through it. But you guys are great, it's a great organi a great uh, organization for the school, and we thank you very much. And let's just give another round of applause. Hey, would you like to say a few words too, or are you? She's all, she's all set. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for coming and informing us of what's going on. We will be back to normal, not hopefully. And just so you know, the, uh, the other uh, board guests just had a conflict. They couldn't make it tonight, so. We will hopefully get them rescheduled to a future meeting. So, correct? So, we move to Superintendent's report, Mr. Dresick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The actual EPS update tonight is about summer school. Uh, summer school for grades K to 8 will be taking place from July 6th through August 12th, but that does not include Fridays. So, it's Monday through Thursday. Sessions, sessions will run from 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Sessions for K-5 students will take place at Prudence Crandall. Uh, and sessions for six to eight will take place at Enfield High School, and as well as the Enfield High School students will, will take place at Enfield High School. Teachers use resources that aligns with our regular curriculum and their daily instruction, and students will engage in reading, writing, math, and science daily. Uh, we're currently reaching out to finish up the registration process with families, um, but registration forms need to be completed and submitted by Thursday, June 10th, so anyone watching. Um, Right now, we are currently at capacity based on staffing, um, but we do have approximately 240 elementary students, about 70 students at the middle school, and a little less than that at the high school, which is the largest middle school, uh, largest summer school program we've ever run. Um, transportation is also being is made is going to be made available for students as well. So, anyone watching, uh, the final registration needs to be submitted by Thursday, June 10th, so we can have a final head count and we can also give Smith Bus a little bit of leeway to try to figure out those who may require transportation. Uh, the last day of school for all Enfield Public School students is Wednesday, June 16th, which actually coincidentally falls on a remote day. Um, but the last day for in-person classes is on Tuesday, June 15th. I want to wish all our students and staff and families a great summer. Um, if you ever deserved a summer break, now is the year. So um, I'm trying to direct everyone that once we get wrapped up, everybody get out of here for a little bit um, and try to get your heads back to normal because we've all had them spinning for the last 15 months, as Ms. Thurston said. Uh, and we'll students will return back to school for the start of the 21-22 school year on Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. Enfield High School graduation commencement ceremony will be held on Tuesday, June 22nd at 7 p.m. on the football field at Enfield High School. And we did find out today, I don't want Alex to get mad at me, um, but we are able to live stream the, the commencement ceremony on YouTube. We're hoping to offer more. We're waiting for some feedback, but they, they all braved the elements today and we're testing equipment out on the field in 100 degree heat. So thank you to Alex and to Guy and to Brad and everybody who was out there trying to help. Um, but they'll also have CDs available to purchase at Central Office like we do every year for the cost of $10. And the last thing that's not on my award on my sheet, but I wanted to bring to the board's attention, and I haven't had an op opportunity to even congratulate this teacher or student yet, but I was notified late last week that every spring the Connecticut Council of Language Teachers recognizes students for what's called the Connecticut Colt Student Award for Excellence in World Languages. And this year we had five L uh, Enfield High School students that were recognized um, for, the, for the excellence in world language. And those are all students of Amanda I'm going to mispronounce your name, Amanda. Robustel Price. And the students, I don't want to mispronounce your name, but Benjamin Carrier for French 5 AP, Cassandra Fortune, French 4, Madison Villou, French 4, Leah Anderson, French 2, and Trevor Broxton for French 2. It's a pretty prestigious accomplishment on behalf of our World Language Department. And I didn't even tell Ms. Jensen that I got this yet, but I had it and I wanted to say it tonight on camera. So that will conclude the superintendent's report. Thank you. Number eight audiences. Does anyone in the audience want to speak? No one signed up. No one signed up. 
So last call. No one wants to speak. We will close. I didn't turn on econ. We will close public communications. Uh, number nine, board member comments. Uh, Ms. Thurston, would you like to start? Or? Um, I actually just want to congratulate Connie Preventure and her team at ERFC for an amazing time um, Friday for their Toast of the Town. It was just so much fun. The place was very well attended. Um, so hopefully the kids, you know, we came together for the kids. And um, I will be nice. I will not. Mr. Jezik did a wonderful job. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. And I know just about all of us actually were there. Um, so thank you again, Connie and her team. That's thank it. You. Ms. Thurston. I mean, Mr. <laughs> Ms. LeBlanc. LeBlanc. OK. Um, all right, this is where I'll start. Um, we, I also attended the ERFC Toast of the Town. Um, it was, it was a great event, and um, it was, it was so nice to see everybody there for, for the kids of Enfield. So, um, that was really a great night. Um, I'd also like to take a minute to congratulate girls softball. Um, they lost in the semifinals um, in 11 innings by one <laughs> run. So it was definitely a hard fought battle. Um, I know the games um, with the weather had been getting bumped around. So I'm trying, you know, I'm sure that, that part of it was hard on them. Um, I know because I heard uh, the boys volleyball team made it and they're going to the finals. Um, I think they're playing Xavier or is it at Xavier? at Xavier. Uh, they drove down to Shelton tonight, and from what I heard, they were playing in a gym with no air conditioning. So that had to be a hot night down there. So um, congratulations to them. Um, I'd also like to congratulate Aslan Ferris, who um, went to Nebraska and um, was working for the Olympic trials. Um, it, didn't, it didn't turn out the way she wanted it to, but nonetheless, she worked hard and um, Everyone is very proud of her. Um, we also had another accomplishment in tennis, Lucas. Um, he made it to the quarterfinals, so um, we haven't gotten an update on that. Um, I went to the Enfield Eagle uh, football golf tournament this weekend. Um, John LeBlanc was there. He, he golfed. Um, it was a great day, um, raising money for the, for the kids. Um, I love so many people from the community come out and, and participate in uh, that event. Um, on uh, Memorial Day weekend, um, we lost somebody who used to work for many years for the Enfield Public Schools in the lunchroom. Um, Ann Barry passed away, um, and I just wanted to uh, give my thoughts and prayers to her. Um, some of her fellow employees, I went to the wake and the funeral came out and, and remembered her fondly. And um, I remembered some of the lunch ladies from when I went to Prunes Crandall and this one was very surprised that I remembered her from all those years ago, but I thought she was the coolest one. So I told her that, so we had a chuckle. Um, and then one last thing, and I, I kind of typed it up so, so I would remember. Um, I just wanted to take a minute and say to the parents, students, teachers, admin, EPS staff, which includes nurses, cafeteria workers, parents, secretaries, librarians, um, like you, guidance counselors, uh, bus drivers, uh, we made it. Um, we are at the end of the school year, and we as parents and staff have probably lived through one of the most challenging times in our lives. And what I ask is this, don't be too hard on yourselves. Give yourself a pat on the back and say, I did it. We did it. We experienced something we never thought we would experience in our lifetime. And someday, we all know we'll be sitting somewhere saying, remember during the pandemic, nothing during this time was easy. Schedules and daily routines were basically thrown to the side. Thank you to the staff who worked tirely, tirelessly through this. The staff who offered support not, to not only the students, but the parents as well, all while managing your own lives during the pandemic. To the parents, so many times we as a district ask for your patient, and that is so hard to do when it involves our kids. Thank you for persevering and understanding the district's strict adherence to the Department of Public Health. We didn't always agree with every little piece, even me, even me. However, in the end, we knew in our hearts it was what was best for our kids and staff. Uh, lastly, I wanted to take a minute to thank uh, Mr. Drezek and Mr. Longi, who stuck to their convictions to follow the scientists and medical professioner professionals, no matter how much pressure you are getting. I can't thank you enough for putting the health and safety of our students and staff at the forefront. 
Um, I also want to take a moment to say um, that in honor of Pride Month, um, I decided to wear my um, Everyone is Welcome Here shirt. And I'd like to end with a quote um, that resonates to me. There's no race, no religion, no class system, no color, nothing, no sexual orientation that makes us better than anyone else. We are all deserving of love. And that's from Sandra Bullock. So with that being said, um, I hope that the students have a safe and healthy summer. I hope our teachers do. And for the graduates um, that are gonna be walking down the hill, I'll see you on the 22nd. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blank. Mr. Ryder. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have my my pride ribbon uh, that we got at JFK. Uh, so a special thank you to JFK's Gay Straight and Alliance organization for uh, Pride Day. They sold these ribbons for a dollar to support the Trevor Project uh, during the lunch waves uh, end of last week. Um, so thank you everybody at JFK for doing that to all the students that purchased one. Um, also JFK National Junior Honor Society. Uh, the, the ceremony was last week and we wanted to congratulate our 30 new National Junior Honor Society inductees. There was 30 JFK students that were inducted. Um, and the YouTube link with the video of that ceremony is on, it, well, it's in a couple places. It's in Dr. Barrios' most recent June release, um, Principal's Report, Principal's Update. And it's also posted on infilpto.com slash JFK. And it's also on the main page in the blog section with the YouTube link to watch that. So if that's something that you couldn't attend, uh, but you know a friend or a neighbor uh, it was in that ceremony and honored that evening, I, I encourage you to watch that. It was a, very well done. Um, also, there is a link to the most recent virtual arts festival. The arts festival this year was not in person. But again, this is one of those things that I like better <laughs> because instead of going to one of the schools on one night for a couple of hours that you might have had a soccer conflict or, or dance, or, you know, um, or a board of ed meeting, um, you can watch it virtually. Uh, so again, uh, that's posted in all the principal's weekly updates uh, the last few days. And there's also a link to that on fieldpto.com. There's also the virtual scholarship night video and that YouTube link as well as a separate link for bloopers yeah. is available. Uh, and again, the scholarship night is something that I think works better virtually because we all want to go and we go when we can. Um, but it's so nice to just watch that at any time you want. Just click the YouTube link and whether it's during the day working on something and you're listening or you just, I'm going to watch that after dinner and you just hit the button. Um, speaking of virtual events and JFK, Annie Jr. was the play this year. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was supposed to be Frozen Jr. And I was promoting that. And I was like, everybody, please come and watch my sixth grader stage debut. And it was the following Thursday. That was our last day of school. And the Frozen Jr. was supposed to premiere a couple of days after that. Uh, but Annie Jr. was done with this virtual world in mind. It was all done virtually. All the actors and actresses, singers, dancers, et cetera, all did their parts at home. And it's all on screen, and there's a YouTube, I'm sorry, not a YouTube link. Uh, this one, you actually buy tickets. Um, you can watch it. Uh, it's basically like an iTunes rental where you purchase the, the musical. You have 48 hours to watch it, and there you go. Um, so the information for that is on infieldpto.com, as well as uh, Dr. Barrios' most recent JFK June principles update. Um, so I encourage everybody to rent that video and watch it. It'll be available through, I believe, the 1st of August. Um, but basically, at any, any point in the next month, month and a half, two months, um, you can download that and watch that at your leisure. Um, we're going to rent it as a family this weekend and watch it in Dad's new theater. I built a theater over these COVID times in my basement, the big screen and speakers. So we're going to watch that this weekend. Um, also, iPad return instructions. Not all grades are returning iPads. Uh, there are some situations where certain grades are going to keep their iPads, but if you need a refresher on the iPad return instructions, again, those were sent home to all students through the principal's updates, either early this week or towards the end of last week. Um, and if you need that, you, again, go to enfieldpto.com and there's a link for that if you need that. Um, I wanted to thank ERFC and the Enfield Rec Department for all of what they both do 
for our students over summer. If rec basketball isn't your thing, there's chess club, there's babysitter courses, there's, you know, how to be a mom helper. I mean, they offer so many different things. So please check out the Enfield Rec website through the Town of Enfield's page, as well as the RFC, for all the things they offer besides just childcare things. There's, there's actually a lot of fun things to do. And our town offers a lot, and they deserve a lot of credit for that. So please check those things out. Uh, two school-specific things, Hazardville Memorial School, uh, HMS PTO got water bottles with the new uh, Husky logo uh, that all the students will be getting. Uh, this Friday, June 11th, is Community Day, and June 11th is Community Day or Field Day at Eli Whitney. Again, iPad instructions have come from both principals recently. And the last thing I have from Eli Whitney is a gift to all of you guys. And this is from Eli Whitney. So I'll hold one up and then I'll just pass them down. Uh, but this is the Whitney Wolves Community Cookbook. Oh. So what they did is, I at, so don't cook. Huh? At, well, as a way of celebrating, you know, that we all have different meals that we like, different cultures, different things we do at home. So you can go through this and you can oh, cool. learn how to cook different things. So I was told to read this because they didn't want me to go on and on. So I have to read this. So. The Eli Whitney Community Collaborative Committee, which is comprised of teachers, staff, parents, and community partners, teamed up with Kite to come up with a project that focused on the multi multiculturalism and diversity in our town. In celebrating the unique traditions of our school community, students and staff contributed recipes, family traditions, and artwork to help create this special gift that will be given to all students and staff at the end of the school year at Eli Whitney. This kickoff project is the beginning of a focus on equity and inclusion in our school that we look forward to carrying on for years to come. As a part of the Eli Whitney community, I am pleased to be able to present each of you a copy of the cookbook. And I'm told one of these is not for me because mine will come home with my son. Uh, so please take one and pass it down. And then there's some for the folks at the important table down in the corner. Uh, so with that being said, again, uh, Please have a happy and safe summer. Seniors, we will see you soon. Um, and thank you for everything uh, that we've all done this year. And I appreciate it. And uh, take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Who would like to start on this one? Mr. Longeyer? Um, OK, sure. Do we, have, do we have enough of those? Do we have enough? Oh, yeah, if they need one more over there, so later on. Okay. Mr. Ongar, sorry. Sure. So uh, thank you for the cookbook. And um, so also attended the ERFC um, Toast of the Town. It was an outstanding event. What was really encouraging about it was that everybody was there um, and the masks were off and people were together. And it was, it was like COVID was in the rearview mirror that we're getting over it. And it was so encouraging to for all of us to be together again so that was a very very nice event um i just want to thank uh i also want to recognize the seniors and congratulate them on uh, making it through this the most challenging year um i think that we've all ever seen uh, in our school system and then beyond the seniors again everyone else who's made it through this year uh, congratulations and uh, that's that's it thank you mr ongar who wants to go next? Ms. Cushman? Just very briefly, I just wanted to um, just remark what an honor it was to get to be part of the adult education graduation last weekend. And, um, or last week, at, it was just a great opportunity to celebrate with them. And I look forward to getting to celebrate with our seniors as well. And Mr. LeBlanc. All right, just uh, real quick uh, to uh, Mr. Terezic, thank you for the uh, summer school update because I know that was definitely a uh, uh, lot of questions and, and whatnot surrounding that over the last few weeks. So um, I'm sure there's more to come, but <laughs> but uh, that's a good, good update to uh, move forward with as we uh, close out the school year. And my only other thing for you would be, is there going to be any uh, middle school orientation? this year yeah for for incoming correct they're working on that stuff that's it 
Yes, Miss Thurston, go ahead. I'm going to learn to cook. I'm so excited. <laughs> you got to turn the mic on so people can hear you. I got a big mouth. Okay. Mouth, but they know what I meant. I'm excited. Thank you, Eli Whitney. <coughs> okay, so on May 30th, we had our what was to be our Memorial Day parade, but Mother Nature said no. But prior to that, the Veterans Council put the word out they wanted a Memorial Day parade, but with the, the school's restrictions and the COVID and all that, it was hard for the band to get together. So they put the word out to our, to our uh, music coordinator, Mark Rapucci, and he said, let me see what I could do. So in direction with the band direction under Chris Dresco, and Aaron, and I'm going to, I'm going to butcher these names. So if someone could pipe in, OVC, OVC, OVC. Wow. Yeah. Well, the the assistant band director. These are the students that volunteered their time, and we had a ceremony in the high school because of the rain. So I'm going to list the students who volunteered, and again, I, was, I apologize if any of the names don't come out right. So for flute, we had Jackie Barrow, Sydney Hamry, Jonathan Laregui, Laregui, Legere. Legere, sorry, Aiden Payer, yep. Robert Thielen, Thielen, those were our flutists. Under clarinet, we had Jackson. Bouchard, Lindsay Tchaikovsky, Harley Griffin, a, uh, a, a, Ariana. Ariana Swagger, Carter Bush, uh, those were clarinets. Under alto sax, they were Carter Bouchard, Eric Sorard, Josh Tetro. Tetro. Tenor sax was Ledger Bartholomew. Under trumpets was Aaron Coons, Ember Holocomb, Holocomb, Tyler Thibodeau. Thibodeau. Mellophone was Nate Messier. Trombone was Joseph Razowitz. Harrison Youngberg. Baritone was Anna Besmis. For tuba was Keonti Crawford, Aaron Justice, percussion was Jeremiah Agard, Jacob Post. Also, the national anthem was sung by Emily Vandell, and I just want to thank all these students who took the time out and made, made Memorial Day a special event even though it was inside, but it was still a great, great event to be, to be there. And I think we should just give them all a round of applause. So then there was also the adult education graduation over at the, uh, the annex. It was a great ceremony. There was only eight graduates present, but I was told there was 18 people graduated. And, um, Thank you to Ms. Crisati for the program she puts on there. It's And that graduation is something I look forward to every year. I missed last year because of we know what, but it was great. So then the next night we had the ER, ERFC Toast of the Town that we all were present for, and about 320 people were also present. I want to thank Councillor Crisati and Councillor Mangini and Councillor Ungeyer, and Councillor Hemmler, and Councillor Muller that were there to support it. And again, like, like uh, Vice Chairman uh, Ungeyer said, maskless was, I think it was the first event that we all got together and celebrated that this pandemic is God willing behind us. So. But most of all, I want to thank Mr. Trezik for, for uh, being our guest speaker and didn't say my word, my name, so that was great. Did say somebody else's, but I'll just leave it at that. Um, 
and uh, thank to thank that whole committee. But I also want to point out that Claire Hall, who is the executive director, is retiring this year. So I wanted to have a shout out for all her hard work over 26 years, I think it was said. And especially this last year, last September, we were in a bind. And she came up with the plan of the, and what's the program called? Distant, Distant Learning Center, sorry. Distant Learning Center over at the Annex. And if without that, we, we would have had, it would have been difficult to get the schools open and even town employees to, to work. So she just had the, she just had the, the, the plan and, and put it to work. And, and again, for 26 years of service to this town, I want to thank her. And again, let's give her a round of applause. And so that was Friday. And that's, yeah, that's about it. So again, I want to thank everybody. Oh, and let not to forget the seniors that will be graduating in two weeks, marching down the hill that was missed last year. But thank you for surviving through this school year, putting all, all the hard work into it, and graduating in two weeks. That's the key. And hopefully we'll all be present for it. So we'll leave it at that. So let's move on to unfinished business. We have none. Number 11, new business. 11A, Innovation Enhancement, Enhancement Head Start Grant. Do I have a motion to accept uh, the requesting board to accept the endorsement of this Innovative Enhancement Head Start Grant? Motion. Motion Second. by Ms. LeBlanc, seconded by Ms. Thurston. Any discussion? I, I guess uh, we couldn't have Jackie Valley here tonight to... No, this is, just, they don't need a formal vote. This is just a, 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 it's an endorsement of the grant that it's an a, enhancement to the existing grant. So you've already formally voted on the existing Head Start grant. This okay. is an addition to it. But Ms. Valley wanted the board to have it as an FYI. And also if the board chose to endorse it, they can. So we didn't need to make a motion at all? Well, you can if you're going to make, you can do a hand vote if you have, if you okay. want to. You don't have to take a formal roll call. So any comments or concerns on this? So this is just an additional to the, the original Head Start grant that we've already yeah, approved. It's an additional $100,000 to the Head Start program. Okay. Any comments, concerns? Um, I had a concern. Please, Mr. Ongo. Yeah, I'd like to just voice a concern. I went, th I went through the grant somewhat and looked at it. And um, so let me, let me get to where we are here. So in the, in the grant, it calls for um, adopting a curriculum, essentially um, this NAEYC, which is the National Association of Educational uh, Education for Young Children, the four core goals of identity development and anti-bias education. And I went, I looked that up, and there were elements of that that I, that were, I found concerning, and I didn't understand, I don't understand, I wish uh, Ms. Valley was here so that we could understand about how they plan to um, implement that in the year three that the grant calls out and what the scope of that is, uh, her understanding of the scope. So in, until, I, until I know more about that, I can't fully support it. I can't support it. Okay, anyone else? So uh, all in favor, um, Ms. 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 Cushman? I do agree um, with what Mr. Angai was saying and just wondered if um, if what has already been approved, is that already, is this included in what's already been approved? The organization Mr. Unghire referenced is actually the, the accreditation organization for all, for all the Head Start programming. So in order to apply for any of the Head Start grants, you have to uh, follow the recommendations that come forth from that organization to include in your grants. So it would be no different than any other Head Start grants you've already approved in the past. So it would already have this element of the anti-bias Education. Yes, that's part of the accreditation process. Any other comments? All in favor? Anyone against? 
So it's five in favor, two against. Thank you. 11B, discussion and action, if any, regarding the June 22nd, 2021 regular Board of Ed meeting, which would be here at 7 o'clock, but we would probably be at the high school at that time. So it's pretty hard to be in two places at once. So I need a motion to cancel our January, June 22nd, 2021 meeting, regular Board of Ed meeting. So moved. moved by Ms. Thurston. Second. Seconded by Mr. LeBlanc. And the discussion is pretty straightforward. We would just not be here. So <laughs> we could have the cameras come on and just uh, just put posters of us if we want. They're not going to be there either. Yeah. Gonna oh, that's right. He won't. Yeah. yeah that's exactly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Alex, you won't be there either. Yeah. He, here either. So you'll be there. So again, the, the conflict is graduation night. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Just so everybody's clear. We need a roll call or hand yes, roll? Yes. Roll call. Roll call, please. Mrs. Thurston. Yes. yes, that's yes. to cancel. Mr. Ongeyer? Yes. Mrs. Cushman? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yep. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Chairman Cruzel? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. 11C, approval of 2021-2022 Healthy Foods Certification. Do I have a motion to approve? We want it to. Oh, no. want a, you want to vote no. Yes, so the motion gonna, would be to vote no. Motion to approve, and then we'll, and then we'll all vote no. Well, we'll, 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 that'll be in the discussion. We need the motion, right? Yes. So, so, yeah. so motion to approve by Ms. Thurston, seconded by Ms. Cushman. Now, discussion. We do not approve of this healthy food certification. We do this every year at this yes. time that if we were to do this, my understanding is if we were to do this, approve this, it would open us up to this certification being for all foods served in the high school, the concession stands or any special events or anything. And the food that is served in our lunchrooms is above and beyond what this certification yep. calls for. So that's why we do not approve it every year. Does that, that make sense? Did I make Perfectly stated. I, well done. Okay. It's, got it. I've been doing it for six years. I think I, think I finally got it. So. And one year we had to print them out, and they were literally this thick. Yeah. And it was ridiculous. So a no vote will not approve it, is what I'm trying to say. Yes. So roll call. Any other discussion? <laughs> Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Thurston? Mr. Ongeyer? No. Mrs. Cushman? No. Mr. LeBlanc? No. Mrs. LeBlanc? No. Mr. Ryder? No. Chairman Cruzel? No. Motion does not Just pass. Just to note that this is probably the only vote every year that we vote all vote in favor <laughs> no. <Yeah>. So. <laughs> all right, that takes care of our business. So let's go to 12 board committee reports. Curriculum, Mr. LeBlanc? Uh, curriculum is uh, not going to meet this month, and we will hold our next meeting at the start of the next school year. Well, there's, there's one scheduled in August. August. I yeah. don't know the date, but there's already one scheduled in August. So. Right in time for the start of the school year. Yep. Finance, Mr. Ongar. Uh The Finance Committee will be meeting on June 14th. No, that can't, that meeting was canceled also. Uh, I didn't. I missed that. It, it was, just came out today. So. Okay. Thank but you. again, we have another meeting scheduled in August, and I'm not sure of the date. So. Okay, thank you. Policy, who wants to handle it? There's really not much to say. Mr. Ryder or Mr. Ongeyer? Uh Policy did not meet last month, and we're probably not going to meet again until we have directives to re-review some additional series. We are caught up to date, and we're just waiting for CABE to scan all those and make them a little bit easier for people to look at answers for, like a searchable database. But other than that, okay. uh, no meeting scheduled at this time. The leadership did not uh, did not meet. Uh, joint facilities is meeting this Thursday. We uh, did not have a quorum at our last meeting. And uh, and we're still proceeding with the two roofs for Eli, uh, the phase one of Eli Whitney and Hazard of a Memorial and other other things in the town. Uh, JFK Building Committee meeting met last Thursday, but I couldn't attend. I don't know, Stacy, were you? There wasn't anything. I mean, they're still just proceeding. Uh, yeah, proceeding as scheduled. They are. They are going to present to the council. I don't know if it's going to be July or. I don't know if that yeah. was meant. 
that was what they, Andy, or um, Randy, I'm sorry, yeah. did ask about if they could present to us. Y they to yeah, do. and with our, well, with our next meeting canceled, maybe we could look at to, we only have the one meeting in July, and then we have the meeting in August, so maybe we can get them here in August. We'll look at, we'll, I'll work with Randy on that. Joint security. Joint security meeting did uh, happen last week. We're meeting again on Wednesday, August 4th at 8.30. Okay. Joint insurance did not meet. Youth and Mental Health and Wellness Advisory Committee. I believe they have one more meeting um, this school year, but I will have to double check on that. Okay. Any other committees? All right. Number 13. Approval of minutes, regular Board of Ed meeting minutes, May 25th, 2021. So moved. Moved by Ms. Thurston. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ungeyer. Any discussion? All in favor? Six in favor. Any against? All abstain. All abstain. And one abstention. Six in favor, one abstention. Special Board of Ed meeting and workshop minutes for June 1st, 2021. Moved by Ms. Thurston. Second. Seconded by Ms. LeBlanc. Any discussion? All in favor? We have seven in favor, zero against. Approval of accounts and payroll? We have none. none. Correspondence and communications? I have nothing. Just I want to say th again, thank you. Thank you, to, uh, thank you to Whitney for the cookbook. And oh, communication. The tree is still at Whitney. I checked out it this past weekend. It's still there, and that's my due diligence. I will keep an eye on that tree. With that, executive session, we have none. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Mist motion by Ms. Thurston, seconded by Mr. Longire. And it's before 8 o'clock, thank God. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you very much, and have a good night. And everybody have a nice summer.